Kyle here from allmereviews.blogspot.com. Um, here to talk about the band Three, the great uh, sort of upstate Woodstock-based New York band led by Joey Upper, not the Keith Emerson <laughs> project from the '80s. Um, so I first heard about them in 2006, I think it was, uh, when they, um, yeah, it was around. Two, I think it was the Dredge Traversing Message Board where they talked about them, and then. Uh, Alternative Press, which included the 2006 100 Bands You Need to Know issue, included The Receiving of the Sirens, Protest the Hero, and House of Fools, among others. A lot of prog stuff showing up in Alternative Press, which is not known for that, but um, one band they compared them to was King's X, I remember. Um, so, and I, I can't tell the, the exact story of why I bought that, but um, reg re regardless, 3 was formed in the early 90s, because uh, Joey Eppard... Uh, he's the good singer, guitarist, and um, songwriter, primarily, with his brother Josh, his younger brother Josh, and then um, a guy named, he was known as Gartram. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting, though, because well, I know this. Josh, Josh Eppard was in the band <laughs> initially, but they've had different membership changes. Um, but anyway, they played at Woodstock 94, and if they're from Woodstock, they could just drive down the road uh, with King's X. Uh, ironically, with King's X was at Woodstock 94 as well, among others. Um, but it took them a number of years, because they were, pro like I guess, a local band that did mostly live stuff. I don't know if they put out any singles at that point, but it took many years, and uh, their first album, their debut album, came out, I think it was 1999, but the, the versions I have were, say, 2000, Paint by Number. So, um, Wrong Side is my would be my go-to track. But, you know, at this point, I, I don't... Josh Eppard wasn't in the band. Um, and I'm not sure if he was with what was known as Shibuti at that point, or was, he just wasn't in the band, because he's not listed on the list of credits on there. It was Joey Eppard, Billy Riker, um, Gartrum, Gartrum uh, was the drummer, and Chris Bittner. Uh, who, I don't know if... He, I think Chris Bittner might be related to Jason Bittner from Shadowfall, but i um, not certain about that. Anyway, um, but I yeah, it does mention Shibuti, you know, it, it, Shibuti, the, which later became Kohi and Cambria, Claudio Sanchez's band. So, but yeah, wrong, uh, Paint by Numbers, a, a fun, you know, catchy debut album. Like, Wrong Side is like a power pop, you know, like, power pop, um, you know, like, it's power pop. You know, I don't know how else to describe it. It's very, uh, it has the guitar hook. And, you know, the, the infectious melody, um, there's a video for it even, so, but it also has, like, Lay Down the Law, the title track, Paint My Number, You Call Me Baby, uh, Careless Kim, Kim, um, Heart Attack, I think, Policeman, I mean, you know, it's a fun debut album, it, it took many years to release, you know, with different lineup changes, but Joey Eppard's been the sort of one central figure throughout the history of this band. Three. So then he actually, since he would play play live, and they were they got to be known really well known live, like the, as a live band. And Joey Eppard would play solo frequently, and he put out a solo album um, in two thousand two. So two thousand two was a couple years later, ninety nine or two thousand from Paint by Number. But they, he put out the solo album, and then they put out Paint by Number or Paint by Number put out Half Life rather. Which when I first got into the band, I was checking out their whole catalog. I eventually came to conclude that this would be maybe their best record because it's live because it captures what they do live so well and just it was epic it also had like a funk like a stevie wonder element at points i really noticed but it all this this live album half life has the first version of amazed disgrace which i think it's like 15 minutes on here which a lot of versions there's more that's sort of this to me the signature three track um but it has the title track from paint by number uh, wrong all right gangsta ship uh, gangsta ship <laughs> um, and then life's not fair which has that phrase life's not fair I love you but I don't don't care you can't get out that that out of your head but this was another record that came out that same year 2002 I guess uh, his so solo album Ben to the future Joey Eppard and this is pretty much all acoustic if I'm mistaken but he does a lot of sort of flamenco tapping uh, just kind of just 
distinct or signature style of, of guitar playing, of this acoustic guitar playing. playing. Um, it has a couple of tracks that would later end up on the next record, but also uh, Lay Down the Law, and Paint by Number. Um, yeah, as you can see. But, you know, um, he hasn't put out another solo album since, but, you know, um, but people love this album. You know, Bend to the Future, I think, is on here. I believe is on here. Later ended up on another record I'll mention in a few minutes. But so 2003, the next year, they put out Summer Camp Nightmare, which, you know, an homage to, you know, like Friday the 13th or whatever. Um, it has, among others, Hall Halloween and Dregs. Uh, Dregs is another track would later end up on the next record. <laughs> so like like Mew and Fair to Midland and Kevin Gilbert, three are a band that are frequently or did frequently uh, rearrange and re-record songs because they thought they could do they could make them better. Uh, Broadway Aliens, another track I always I remember from this album, and Bedroom in Hell, and it does have a Maze Disgrace, one of the first of a few different versions. So, but Summer Camp Nightmare. Um, there's the CD. And um, at this point, again, looking at the lineup, um, the bass player was a guy named Joe Cuccello and again, a keyboard player named Joe Stote. But their drummer was Gart Drum and the guitarist Billy Riker and Joey Uphard. Kind of the, those three, I guess. You, those three would be three. <laughs> but they, I don't believe, they don't, that three, the name three didn't come from the fact they were a trio because they weren't really. I know that there was a thing about he came up with like the power of three and it, sig it symbolizes something. I forget the exact explanation. But I will say that while Summer Camp Nightmare is not a bad record, it's among the ones I, I have bought. It's the one I've listened to the least. So anyway, moving on. So then in 2004, they put out what would I would consider sort of a breakthrough of uh, sort of Wake Pig. And still a couple years before I got into them, but... This is the original uh, Planet Noise Records in, independently released uh, version of Wake Pig. Um, it wasn't remastered. This one wasn't remastered, but um, as you can see, I got it from Cheapo back in late in 2005. So it actually was 2005, not 2006, when I discovered three. Um, but it has a lot of favorites, a lot of live staples that they played since, like Alien Angel, uh, the title track, Brahma, Brahmfutura. Um, Dogs of War, not the Pink Floyd song, although they did cover Pink Floyd, and they're Pink Floyd fans, Joy is specifically. Queen, Monster, a um, lot of sort of, um, I actually was reminded of like Psychotic Waltz at one point, because his sort of falsetto vocal style and the some of the, the, the guitar picking reminded me a little of the, the 90s prog metal band Psychotic Waltz, who put out a comeback album uh, last year. Was it last year or two years ago? It was 20, 2020, but... Um, but yeah, this this record is without really many songs I would skip, you know. And but then they did um, not forget that they did re-release it because they got signed to Metal Blade Records. I want to say the year after, and this was like a an expanded version because I know this was remastered and uh, it was remastered. But you know, this is another version of Wake Pig. Which is two words. I always thought it was one word, but it's two words. Um, but yeah, yeah. This is this is this is. Uh, you can't really read it that well, unfortunately. But one way town. That's that was added, and that's. I would put that with wrong side as one of the five catchiest, most addictive three songs. Um, uh, Circus without clowns is another one that's very catchy. So this is a different track list of Wake Pig. So it's like two different albums almost. But it has a Maze Disgrace, of course. You know, um, and it has, you know, Alien Angel Monster. The track order is a little different. But um, let's just see if I can show this. But, you know, if this album ever came out on vinyl, there's no question I would buy it. Um, love the uh, sort of... <laughs> I always think of the tone in A Maid's Disgrace that goes... Dun, 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 dun. It's... It, it's an epic. You know, Mesa's Grace, it's a song that they've, they've recorded many times, and it's every version works. They're all epic. So so then that was in 2005 or that they re-released Wake Pig through Metal Blade. So then the next album on Metal Blade was 2007's The End Is Begun, which came out right when they, I think, I can't remember, they did a tour with Porcupine Tree, and then they did Progressive Nation 2008. So I'm thinking that 
this album was out for both of those tours. I could be wrong. I know the second the second tour, the Progressive Nation was like in August, I think. So this album, The End Is is Begun, which of course has always been a weird. So you can see they did cover C. Emily Play on here, if I'm not mistaken. It shows, or maybe not. Yes, as a bonus track at the bottom there. Um... Which, it's a pretty straightforward cover. I mean, it's 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 good. It's cool to hear J Joey Eppard sing it, but um, this version comes with a DVD. It's enhanced. I think it's a bonus DVD. But um, in some ways, I'd say this might be their heaviest album. I don't know. It's They're not metal three, but... I mean, compare them to Psychotic Waltz, who are metal, but um, they uh, get heavy at points. A lot of heavy guitars, and, you know, I... It, Metal Blade Records, go figure. Although Metal Blade Records also had Spock's Beard, and Spock's Beard's not metal either. So, um... I mean, my go-tos on this album besides... Or... <laughs> would be... Besides... My Divided Falling, Serpents in Disguise, another one of the top five catchiest three songs. And I should just make a list. I'm kind of doing that right now. Um, it's got the other... The, the, the band full band version of Bend to the Future, which lyrically is haunting. I think of... Um, I know they referenced Terminator uh, in one of the videos for All That Remains. Uh, All That Remains is an epic track. It's very memorable. These Iron Bones. No, actually, I think it might have been that These Iron Bones. One of the two. Might, These Iron Bones might have been the one they did that was referencing Terminator. I think it was Terminator 2 or Terminator 3. I think it was Terminator 2. Um, the Last Day. Kind of bleaky, bleakish. The, the title track is very, like, marchy. It's like got a march element to it um but it gets sort of heavier and louder as it goes the world is the word is born of flame i mean they were he was kind of doing a word play i also concluded this time that three would have been a great band to tour with the deer hunter and kiss kiss i made that kiss kiss video a few weeks ago i was forgetting three well no no i'm not forgetting i was thinking kiss kiss three between the barrier to me and the, and the deer i'm screaming for the deer hunter but um yeah, because I know Joey Eppard really admires Josh um, Banash's string arrangement. But, yeah, this is, I don't know. I mean, this is this is a four-star record, easy for me. Um, and, uh, yeah, they were getting the buzz, the buzz. You know, at this point, Coheed and Cambria, they're sort of contemporaries. And Josh, I don't believe Josh was the drummer on this. I should look that up. Um, again, Daniel Grimsland became the bass player. He's like the permanent. But Chris Gar Gartrum D Gartman has names actually his real names in there no joe i don't know if joey eppard or jo josh eppard's on recorded on many of if any of these three albums um but yeah they were getting some buzz you know not you know coheed was you know had blown up and they were doing headline tours frequently but because at the point you know the fact that three predated them and they had attention from record labels in the 90s and coheed or shabuti and eventually coheed but you know you want to get into sort of Who's better? Band controversies. It, they're both great bands. I happen to probably lean more toward three than Coheed and Cambry overall. But um, anyway, so they put out an album called Revisions, the next album, which hence the title. I don't even have. I don't think. I don't think I bought a copy. If I do, it's somewhere downstairs in a box. But it's a bunch of like sort of older songs that um, never got released. Um, Possibly, I can't remember, maybe a couple of them were on the live album Half-Life, I can't remember. But uh, it, you know, it was alright, but I mean, I don't remember that much. I think there was, Halloween was one of the tracks actually on there, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think it was, because I don't think Halloween, yeah, I think a version of Halloween. So, um, but anyway, I mean, I don't know how much they had expectations for revisions, but it was just, it was partly to do with their sort of, contract and they were being pursued by Roadrunner Records after touring with Dream Theater and Opeth who both were on Roadrunner at that point and they offered and signed with Roadrunner I guess I can't remember if it was that the fact they released revisions on Roadrunner or they released revisions on Metal Blade as the last album on their contract one way or the other they end up releasing revisions they signed with Roadrunner in maybe not in that order Roadrunner Records based out of Europe who had like even Amanda Palmer was on there but a lot of metal acts and then they ended up not being on Roadrunner. I can't. I want to go into all the details and stuff. I don't know about what happened exactly, but the the, the bottom line was that they the thing with Roadrunner didn't work out, and so um, they ended up re-signing with Metal Blade, if I recall. And that was around the two thousand nine, two thousand two 
2000, yeah, around the time of revisions. So then they put out their their last album, which came out in, I want to say 2011. Yeah, it was. On uh, Metal Blade. I th yep, Metal Blade, which, which is The Ghost You Gave to Me, which this is a terrific record also. So, you know, they kind of have been on a winning streak. Um, I know my friend Josh, that drummer guy, thinks this is his favorite. At least at one point he said this was his favorite three album. Um, and he actually got the pleasure of playing with Joey Eppard. Because Joey Eppard, Josh Eppard, Josh Eppard couldn't make it. Joey Eppard's grandfather lives in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm not going to give all the details. But the fact he lives in Rochester and he had a birthday party coming up and Joey wanted to do like a performance. Uh, and we went down there and Josh, Josh, not Josh Eppard, but my friend Josh, that drummer guy, got to play with him. But um, yeah, this is the only child, only child is probably the 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 my favorite track on here and it's the epic it's the most prog um let me show the track list by yeah, this song this album is filled with with great catchy songs it's heavy also so it's like yeah are they a metal band i don't know react and sparrow those two are just awesome and the ghost you gave to me the title track pretty i the whole album has a great flow to it um and the production is probably the best production of all their albums um, it's all 10 years ago. I know Joey's been working on a solo album since, but, um, you know, if this is the last album they ever do, you know, sad, but, you know, it's like these three albums especially are just, they're really all really good. You know, they have this streak of they're just putting out record after record that just, I mean, I, I, I consider revision sort of, you know, uh, bonus material basically. So, but from new studio music and Joey Epper as a songwriter, no, the last thing I said, he's been working on a solo album. Uh, I bought a DVD that I don't I don't know where it is, but I'll show it at some point, a live DVD of his. But um, in fact, I might have got that when I went down to that show in Rochester. I don't remember. But either that or I had him sign it then. Because I know there was like a Kickstarter for it I supported. But um, yeah, he's got a solo album. I can't remember the name. It's been anticipated the last few years, but... He's had various sort of things, hurdles he's been dealing with Joey Uphard, the reason why that hasn't come out. But I know he did a, a chat on Facebook Live a few years ago talking about it and the challenges on trying to finish it and everything. And I'm sure he has dozens of songs he's written since it's been 10 years, some that might fit three. And they did like a sort of semi-reunion a couple times online that I missed, these, these streams. Um, but, you know, I really love three. Um, you know, like I said, if they never do anything else again these three out these three albums especially uh, you know and five top five songs those catchy if you like catchy tracks i would put down um serpents in disguise um uh diamond in the crush is another one off of uh end is begun would be on that list but um let's see one way town circus without clowns <laughs> they kind of rhyme react and probably uh, wrong side would be my like those are four or five uh you know, most catchy three songs. But anyway, you know, if you haven't checked out three, they open, I said they open for Porcupine Tree, they open for Dream Theater with Opeth and Between the Barrier to Me. What are you waiting for? I think most of their music is on Spotify. Check them out on YouTube. Try to buy their physical copies. I would love to see it. And in fact, I should maybe mention, I'm going to try to make a, a video and make a list and make a video of albums I want to come out on vinyl that haven't. I would put, I'd put all of these records as that. I don't know which one I would choose first. I would probably, I probably would go with, I don't know, it's tough. I'd probably go with White Pig just because it's the first one, but, you know, maybe maybe the ghost you gave to me, but, you know, I'd want all of them, you know, so. But thank you for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.